referral for that. Students, before we begin, we want to remember, make sure you have your mask up and over your nose. Nose. If you're sitting kind of close, so we want to make sure you're protected. Also, this is a very, very special occasion. And although I know some of us like to joke around and have fun, this is the day that we want to remember and thank our servicemen and women. So it's a serious occasion for me. We have some of our parents who are in armed forces, and we want to show them that we know how to respect ourselves, others, and our community. We do that every day, and we talk about that in our announcements every morning. This is the day to demonstrate that. So we're going to begin our program first, and we'll see if we can do it nice and quietly. We're going to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, and the flag is right here, and we're going to show how much our flag. Please stand for the Pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to welcome our parents, any of our visitors from the community who come today for us to honor today with the blood. Our Veterans Day program. And students, this is a very, very special occasion, as I said before. I'm Dr. McCoy, I'm from Madison Middle School, and to my teachers and staff and colleagues, thank you so much for honoring today. As you know, this is one of my favorite occasions. I have two members of my family who are also currently serving as US, uh, U.S. Marines, my husband and my younger son. And so this is the day that I really, really love to celebrate because I want to thank everyone for their service, including the sacrifice that our family has made for the military. So I thank you for that. And before we start, I want to give you just a little bit of what this day is about. We always like to give you the purpose of what this day is about. Veterans Day is a federal holiday in the United States observed annually on November 11th for honoring military veterans, both men and women who have served in the United States Air Force Armed Forces. This day is also called Armistice Day. Veterans Day is always celebrated on the same day, instead of being a Monday like many other holidays. Veterans Day is on November 11th because the fight in World War I ended on Armistice, or truce, on the 11th hour, the 11th day of the 11th month in 1982. Let us not take only this special holiday to celebrate our veterans, but every day. Our women and men in uniform have given so much for us. They have sacrificed our own family by not spending much time in the life of their family and friends. They have spent many holidays and celebration away from their families, all while serving their country and communities with dignity and honor. If you have a veteran in your family or see them in a grocery store or in your community, please thank them for their service. And at this time, we will have our band force come forward with this election.
thank you for working with our students back in the building this year and getting on an early start. Thank you so much for that performance. Now we're so excited. Not only do we have two teachers in our building, but we have some veterans here. And I would like to first introduce Mr. Paul to come forward. Lieutenant Colonel Pat Paul will be speaking. Sorry. speak to the student body here today. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Francis P. Pollock, United States Air Force retired. I served for 30 years as a citizen, citizen soldier in the Delaware Air National Guard. I am also proud to be an educator here at Madison High School. Today is a federal holiday. It is not one where we exchange gifts, get flowers, get candy, or celebrate the passage of time. Instead, it is a day of thanks, reverence, and remembrance. It is not about me or an individual. It's about all of us, the Marine Corps, the Navy, the Army, the Coast Guard, and the Air Force, a collective known as the United States Armed Forces. During my time of service, I have visited the USS Arizona. I have buried comrades in arms in Arlington Cemetery. I have paid my respects in American military stops, cemeteries in European countries in Italy, Belgium, and France. Every time during my visit to these sacred places, without fail I feel humbled. The silence is deafening. An air so thick with reverence, your every step is done with effort. I stand in all these immortals with morals for all and emulate. These heroes defended the nation with no expectation of reward. They did what they did because it was the right thing to do. For all time, our veterans have and are answering a call for a greater good and not one of self-interest. They do so because they believe in our nation. I once visited Bethesda Naval Hospital, and as I got on the elevator, a young soldier with both legs missing and his left arm is he was being pushed by his young wife onto the elevator. In his right arm, he cradled his 10-month-year-old son. They asked him how he was. He said, sir, I am living the dream. He said, they may have got my legs and my arm, but I got a wife who loves me, and I can still hold my son in my good arm. He had every right to feel sorry for himself that day, but he did not. The infectious, cheerful outlook of this young soldier is typical of veterans and service members I have encountered throughout my travels. This day is just not for the dead, it is also a celebration for the living. I have served in support of many operations, the Cold War, the Kosovo Campaign, Operation Desert Storm and Desert Shield, Operation Iraqi Freedom, the Global War on Terror in Afghanistan, and Operation Noble Eagle. I have five combat tours to my name. If you are impressed, don't be. I have served with others who have been here three times over me. I am proud to have served these men and women a great spirit, strength, and integrity. I am proud of my military service, and I only have one regret. The regret is the lost time with my family. If there are any students here today who have parents or siblings who have deployed our veterans, please raise your hand. Uh, we cannot, you know, Veterans Day is more than just one person. We cannot do our job without our family's love, support, and courage. This day is also about you. On March 15, 1986, I put this uniform on for the first time. That day, I took a note that millions had before me. I, Francis P. Pollock, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. 
and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I'm about to enter. So help me God. On October 1st, 2016, 30 years later, I took this uniform off, but I never faltered in my oath. Like my fellow veterans, I still believe in the mission we started and what this country represents. When you see a veteran today, thank them. The right, the right you enjoy, the society you live in, your republic's security and safety has been provided by the constitutional guardian that you call veterans. In closing, whatever you do in life, aim high. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pat Paul. Thank you for that. And at this time, again, we're going to have Sergeant Staff Sergeant Andrew Payne come forth. Captain John T. Ferrier is a pilot, an ace in an F-86 in a high-speed chase while his Sabre jet team thundered through space with an audience watching in awe and wonder. They turn on the smoke and begin to draw pictures in the sky, see the dropping jobs, the spectators see the spectacular, but soon they'll see a critical flaw that will draw everyone's attention to the character of courage. As they peel off in formation to the four points of the sky, it's time to react or it's time to die. With this jet in the tailspin, suddenly, comrades wonder why Captain Ferrier did not eject. Split seconds later, a smoldering yard spit out parts of a plane planted hard as dumbstruck spectators find it hard to believe what they just saw. Captain Perry had time, but did not eject. Humbled by this courage, man well up in his years recounts what he saw, his eyes spilled in tears. The pilot himself would have lived on for years, but he planted that plane purposely in a garden patch to avoid bystander casualties. Can you imagine this man, his raw courage, his nerve to plant that plane, nose first in the dirt, and give up his life so no others were hurt? This reaction born of instinct and of courage. In the aftermath, his wife will share a note that she found to explain quite clearly why he planted that plane in the ground. It was brief, but very profound, and it simply said, I'm third. For having lived a life that put God first and people second. That note found tucked in his wallet said it all, and it simply said, I'm third. I had the privilege to meet people like him as an Air Force historian, to read their stories, and to talk with them in person. And while his final flight involved a fatal mechanical malfunction in his aircraft, it involved a passion to love and to serve his family, his friends, and his country. That passion left an impression on me as a young airman, and a legacy that we profoundly reflect on this Veterans Day, and on all occasions when we need to be reminded that there's people that care, that are patriots who care, and to know there's hope when our hearts get heavy, because there continues to be neighbors who love us in every cross-section of this American culture. Captain Ferrier and so many others like him challenge you and I in the here and now to treat others the way that we want to be treated. Now go find someone in this school, in this community, in this state, and in these United States, and you give them everything you've got. And when you serve the needs of others, and put yourself in third place. You'll be amazed to see how often you feel like you're actually coming in first. God bless you all, and God bless these United States of America. Please let your them both another round of applause. Thank you. And next, I have the pleasure to read some of the letters that will be going over to Mrs. Nikki Randolph 
to the American Legion, and every year they read your letters. I have them all here. I think she's getting a promotion today, so she couldn't come. She had planned to come today to get things, but I think she's off in another part of the state today. So thank you, Nikki, for all the work you do with supporting us in Matthew Middle School. So at this time, we're going to read several of the letters, and everybody had wonderful letters, but we would be here all day and try to read them all. And so we went through and tried to pick out some that really, really exemplify what we want to convey today. So I'm going to read several of those. And so if you hear your name, quietly give yourself uh, a pat on the back, okay? I'm only going to use your first name as well. It says, Dear Bethany, I want to thank you for your service toward our amazing country, your contribution towards distributing aid, peacekeeping, and many other things that you do for us will never be forgotten. Putting your life on the line for others is something not everyone can do. Only brave people can do that. You are an inspirational person that contributes to the country and it won't be forgotten. And that's from Jackson. Give Jackson a hand. Dear Bella, thank you so much for all you've done. Thank you for your bravery and doing what you call you call to do every day. So we can safely, safely do what we are free to do. I'd like to thank you for serving our nation. A debt can never be replaced or repaid. Thank you for defending our freedom. God bless you. And thank you for your bravery. And that's from Grace. <laughs> Dear veterans, I would just like to say thank you so much for keeping us safe. People will always look to you to defend our country in hard times. Sometimes you might look back and think, if I hadn't or shouldn't have, or even I could have done better. All those thoughts are true and are from your and they are they are from your inner critic. Don't think about that because you could have done better. You couldn't have served better to more to move people the way you do, that you can't imagine. You're a hero. You're a hero to me. I'm sure, I, I am sure, Iron Man and Captain America wish they were parts of the Avengers because you're amazing. Nobody could have done the job better than you. Sincerely, Emma. There's so much going on in the world right now, but you and so many others are keeping strong and fighting for our country. I just want you to know that your work will never go unrecognized. You are so brave and so kind for fighting for our freedom. I don't know where you are because it is classified. I love that part. But I hope this gets to you another way. America will always appreciate the work you do for us. My hope is that someday there will be a huge swarm of people just waiting to be in the military. If that many people want to be in the military, we sure will be free. That's sincerely a sixth grade. Dear veteran, I'm so proud of you. I know you have zero clue who I am, but I really am proud of your accomplishment, bravery, dedication, and love for our country. I know you had to leave your loved ones and face plenty of hardships. Thank you for defending our lives and liberty. You bravely did what you were called to do. You defended our freedom. You served with all your heart. And for that, our debt can never be repaid. God bless you and thank you so much for your bravery, Elizabeth. Dear better. due to your dedication, we have freedom. Thanks to your courage, we are safe. Because of you, we have America without you. We wouldn't have America without you. We wouldn't have accomplished what we have today. It is people like you that carry on the true American spirit that our founding fathers had when they made this country. We thank you for your service and for the United States of America. I know and love you. Sincerely, Jude. Dear Veteran, thank you for serving America. You are respected, appreciated, and a role model for young people across the United States. Your main sacrifice will not be in vain. We are proud of you. My father is a veteran like you. I'm proud of him. 
Therefore, I will respect any veteran I can write to. Thank you for your courage and dedication. It's been an honor to be writing you. I will share just one time writing for a lifetime. Thank you for your time, and that's from Andrew. <laughs> Thank you for your service, and no matter what you're doing in the military, if it's uh, security, peacekeeping, counterterrorism, distributing aid, or protecting our allies, I want to thank you for your service. And because of you, I feel safe to live in America. Also, because of you, I'm proud to be an American, and every year on November 11th, we honor you for risking your life to protect us. And that's sincerely Grayson. Thank you sincerely for protecting people, not only in America, but protecting people in general. No matter if you're a four-star general or private, you're a very valued person because you've done your work to better the world. To say thanks is an understatement. To the countless hours you put into helping people, you deserve the highest honor along with your colleagues. I truly hope you live your best life, the best life imaginable. You are valued. Sincerely, Chris. So let's give all those students a round of applause. Your letters will be shared with other veterans. So that's a great thing. Usually they're posted uh, on American Legion on the wall so everybody can see them. That's why we just use your first names. But thank you, students, for taking the time, and teachers for taking the time to write a letter this time of year. We really, really appreciate it. And again, we're going to come back and have the honor of you by our boards. Ms. Burrell.
course, include, I want to just make sure, are there any parents who visit, visit today or any community members who are in the armed forces? I would like to have you stand if you're here. Any parent? Grandparent? Bless them in the armed Students, you did a fantastic job. I have a little homework for you before we dismiss stuff. Get some good homework. Please, today, when you get home, call someone you know. If you see someone out in the community, if you're out, research on your computer. I know a lot of people love your computer and iPhone about what this day means. Ask about the stories about this day and learn more about why you need what we do on this special day. Okay? That's your homework. So at this time, thanks again to our wonderful staff members over there. Ted Paul and Staff Sergeant Andy Payne, we thank you so much for today and really pouring into us what this very day is supposed to be. Thank you.